So back, uh, please first tell me where you are, uh, maybe who you are, <laughs> start. <laughs> yes, we don't know each other after all. No, no, um, I'm in Paris uh, mm -hmm. right now. And um, <laughs> every time I'm asked to, um, to answer this question, who am I? Um, I mean, I feel a, a bit stressed. I mean, because I mean, it's um, very hard to define very precisely who I am. Um, so I will say it like in in a mess, let's say. But I am uh, uh, Moroccan, French, uh, Arabic. Uh, I am therapist. I am consultant. Um, I am. I like art. I don't know if, I mean, I was not feeling comfortable saying I am an artist, but maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, what kind of artist, uh, if I may interrupt? I, I like to write mm -hmm. and uh, I like to do music. I just uh, started ukulele a year ago. Mm -hmm. And guitar. Oh, cats! <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> she came. She has. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Filomena. Filomena. Oh, nice name. Yes. <laughs> Filomen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, and I'm doing some. I mean, really, I mean, it's just like for fun. Uh, but I like it. I'm doing like um, some writing some songs and playing them. Mm -hmm. on guitar and ukulele and uh, yeah <laughs> so uh, so uh, this music is like what, what kind of music is it like some blend of different i mean no it's like um ballads you know this um i i, I know i don't know if you speak french because you wrote me in yeah. french mm -hmm. it's uh, like um what's his name um ah, Gainsbourg. Ah, okay. Good. You know, some ballads, just a voice with the guitar, uh, okay. very, very easy. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of uh, like teenager songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I just talk about love mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I imagine with this ukulele and uh, Gainsbourg. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. So music, but I, I imagine this is uh, your passion, or you don't live, or uh, your, I mean, you don't earn money out of it, or you. No, 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 no. I just started all of this like a year ago. Mm. So that's very new. I don't earn money. I'm not even sure that it's good. So I mean, I feel it's good for me, but <laughs> I, I don't even know. And I mean, my purpose is not to make money out of it actually now it's just like i like it i like those moments when i'm just like focusing 100 percent on writing a song finding the right rhythm the right notes mm -hmm. and even if i'm not professional i mean and also working on like playing it well because i'm still learning actually how to play i'm not a professional so mm -hmm. I'm I'm not even like a good uh, a good player for now. So uh, yeah, I like those moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you ever? I mean, before when you were uh, yeah, yeah, younger, I mean, when you were a teenager, uh, did you ever? I mean, did you try writing songs or did you play an instrument? I I started um, uh, like uh, guitar when I was. Uh, 10 or 11 years old in the conservatoire i don't know what's the name in yeah in english and yeah i had like uh, three years of uh, solfege uh -huh. and uh, uh, no four years of uh, this and three years of guitar and they hated it uh -huh. really i mean that was I, I, I was obliged to go there because my parents wanted me to do some music and, and i mean i wanted actually as well but I didn't enjoy it. It was for me like something like hard, like I need to work mm -hmm. and stuff. So I stopped after this. And since then I tried to, to start again guitar, but I had absolutely, I was like, I did all the steps like buying the guitar, 
uh, taking uh, taking a teacher, but I was I had no motivation for that. Mm -hmm. And a year ago, I don't know what happened, and I finally started it and started the like having fun doing it, even learning. Sometimes it hurts. For example, when you start learning, it hurts on the fingers, mm -hmm. but still, I mean, I, I I could find, I mean, and I still find really great pleasure in uh, doing it and even in working it yeah 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 i mean uh, i i can understand it's something which you were forced to and now you actually you know uh, after years i mean how old are you by the way 37 <laughs> yes and you found uh, it's after years you know uh, yeah actually it's not even forced to i think it's the way we i were i was taught okay i mean for example in the conservatoire it's very strict it's like uh, you yeah. have to do this what I there's no place yeah there was no place for fun and actually it's like school actually i oh, that is, no? I, mm -hmm. yeah i have this feeling that we have this i had the same in school i mean there was no fun no real choice you have to learn this and that. And I'm thinking when I'm saying that about uh, uh, the Montessori uh, current where they do differently. Yes. They will just, they, lie, they rely on the child willingness or want to learn something and they just support it mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I meant by f f forcing. I mean, my, my boyfriend also, he, he spent like 12 years in that kind of school. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, he's, uh, you know, kind of uh, waking up out of it. Like you had a, a year ago, this kind of, I don't know how to, Satori, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Still, I guess, uh, ahead of him when it comes to playing, actually, in Israel. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, he loves music, obviously, and, uh, but yeah, 12 years. So I uh, imagine. It's yeah, I can fine. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and okay, and uh, um, and still uh, with this question, who you are? Because I cut into uh, your, you know, kind of narration. What would you would you say something more about uh, uh, as a person, you as a being? <laughs> uh, I. Yeah, I can say that uh, I'm brave. <laughs> mm -hmm. That uh, I'm curious. Yes, mm -hmm. very curious mm -hmm. and uh, sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a pretty good overview of who I am. Yeah. Yeah, and if, if you could tell me, um, yeah, what, uh, I don't know, what circumstance, what, uh, or maybe what events, specific events uh, made you, I mean, uh, made you who you are and uh, um, triggered in you uh, those kind of qualities you already mentioned, like uh, braveness, sensitivity. Were there any people actually or situations in your life? Uh, I mean, when you ask the question, the first, um, uh, the first thing I, I, that came to my mind is uh, when, I, when I left, I mean, <laughs> I'm just remembering this song of Simon and uh, Garfunkel, when I left my home and my family when I was 17 years old mm. for, because I was born in Morocco and I grew up there. And uh, I left to France, Paris, when I was 17, just to continue my studies. Mm -hmm. And I started living uh, uh, by myself. And uh, yeah, that was very hard. Very, very hard. I mean, I was very excited to just like to be independent, uh, live on my own, have my own apartment, etc. But th that was hard. Uh... I think that that was pretty much something really big in my life. Just changing culture, even though there is, n I mean, it's, I mean, I was quite, I mean, I, I have been raised in like very open uh, 
family, even like uh, with a lot of use of French and uh, mm -hmm. when we read the French, etc. But I mean, it was like a cultural shock. Uh, um, even uh, I was raised in this. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that this was a big mm -hmm. event. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Manage if you could say, you know, your first years. If you, yeah, I could uh, describe. Uh, you know, I, I lived my. I mean, we are more or less peers and. Uh, my life was very comfortable in this sense, <laughs> no cultural shock. And, uh, and I sometimes envy people who say, yeah, uh, they, uh, they were excited to go to be independent. And uh, so how was it, you know, your first years <laughs> in Paris? How did you manage? <laughs> uh, the first years were very hard because Paris is like uh, is a tough city, mm. really. I mean, it's not it's not. Uh, for example, I I've lived in Poland in Wrocław, mm -hmm. and yeah. I I yeah, and I felt when I came to Wrocław that I mean it was even if, let's say that Polish where I learned live I mean what I experienced from them in Wrocław are pretty cold but they are warm i mean they are welcoming i mean uh, there is something um, very international small city in wrocław and uh, people are nice and welcoming paris it's it was very different but i think that i was different as well yeah. the situation was different and it was pretty hard because i started like studies in um, in maths and physics there is this yeah. specific thing in france class préparatoire uh -huh. When you have like two or three years of uh, like intensive maths, physics, uh, just preparing for uh, for uh, great engineering schools or um, uh, mm -hmm. business schools, mm -hmm. and that was that was very hard. I mean, I didn't feel like into these things of studying like intensively, even though I liked maths and physics. But I mean, that was hard. I felt like kind of diff. I mean. Yeah, there was kind of uh, like a gap between me and the other people I was studying with. So uh, first times I was a lot with uh, like Moroccans because I was not the only one in this uh, in this school. And but I didn't feel that much comfortable with them. But I mean, it was like kind of natural. I needed to have friends, and the first friends that came were Moroccans. And then after I don't know it, I opened up, let's say, and uh, I started understanding how it was working i never asked myself these questions actually that's pretty weird <laughs> uh -huh. uh, like uh, ask this question like uh, about the like how was it i mean i never describe how it was mm -hmm. in the first years i know that i have a story that i'm telling to myself <laughs> but <laughs> now when describing it i mean in like in words uh -huh. it's uh it's very strange to me mm -hmm. yeah so first years were very hard uh and very and very good as as well because i i just like i didn't study that much actually to be honest i just like i was uh reading a lot i was uh like um i mean i had like i have two two moments the first one you know in morocco you have like this western sahara uh -huh. And and I, I remember first time I saw it like uh, cut in the middle, Morocco cut in the middle, because when I was living in Morocco, they never cut it in the middle. I mean, it, I mean you can be like, you can go to jail if you cut it in the middle. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I saw it for the first time and I was very angry. I was just like, what? Western Sahara, it doesn't exist. It's Morocco. So that was like something I was just like, oh, I mean, that was very strange to see different perspectives. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, none is wrong. I mean, both are, I don't know, valid for the, for, for the ones they made them. And the second thing is like uh, French history. I never learned French history. I mean, uh, and just like, you know, some, some, when you do some jokes, for example, regarding the French Revolution, mm -hmm. or something like this, I was like, I didn't understand, <laughs> I mean, the jokes. You know this, uh, like uh, how you learn and how you you connect. Actually, you connect. We connect a lot regarding those uh, those cultural bases. It's not very very loud. It's mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
I, banal, I don't know how to... banal trivial banal I mean. yeah yeah trivial uh, trivial uh, stuff but it's very hard to access it because yes. it's not written in the books yes and um, for example I mean I have one example for example uh, in in Poland you know the no dobra the no use I mean we can have you see and we can connect we can have fun of it but if we I say this to someone who that who's never been yes. to Poland it's like okay and <laughs> no no okay it's no and no it's yes i mean there is no fun out of it but when you know that no dobra uh, that means yes and but it's not really yes so yeah those banal and trivial things i mean i was very that was the hard thing is was mm -hmm. just like how to get them yes and how to understand them and then now now i i feel like for example i lived also in in the UK and I spent some time in, uh, in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. I feel that I, I, the first things I do when I come, when I go to a place is just like be sensible, or I mean not sensible, but I mean be open mm -hmm. and um, give attention to those small signals, yeah. of, yeah, those uh -huh. trivial things. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, well, uh, I, you re re reminded me of our uh, email exchange and, uh, and now about uh, Poland and you said Cambodia and the UK and uh, how, how come, how did that happen that you stayed in places uh, longer than, I mean, two weeks as a tourist? I yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, UK was because I, it was part of my uh, engineering school. We spent like uh, around, uh, I think that it was uh, six weeks there. Um, so it, we had like, um, I don't remember, maybe more than six. I don't remember, something like one or two months. And uh, we were having uh, like an exchange. So we were uh, at the university. Cambodia, I went there for, uh, yeah, for this, it was the same, and I went there uh, to do volunteering, <laughs> mm -hmm. because in 2007, I was just like, I was fired from my job, I had no money, and my girlfriend just left me, so I was just like, okay, you always wanted to do this, to go volunteering, and to help, and whatever, so okay. go, and that was my first big travel. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was really nice. And Poland, uh, <laughs> because I felt in love with the Polish girl in the Philippines. Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there, and then it didn't work out actually. But I, I, I really, I mean, it was really great experience there. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, I, um, I like um, it was tough at the beginning because it was very different from what I knew before, and at the same time very familiar. I mean, it's I. Poland is like something really between the West and the East. It's very, I mean, some things were really familiar and some things were like really different. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I can understand you, you know, the, the, the uh, I mean, for, uh, hmm, uh, like uh, uh, quite recently when I had this interview with Jean-Marie Robin, uh, uh, in, in, in this individual interview and, and I've, uh, you know, after having those interviews with lots of um, Western Europeans, even though France and French people are Western, not Eastern, but, uh, but mostly Americans, uh, British people, then I thought, yeah, somehow, oh, it, fe uh, it feels uh, different. I mean, the connection for some mm. a different type of, um, well, it, it may be not necessarily the same thing you are uh, um, describing, but yeah, some kind of familiarity too in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, so how much time uh, did you spend, I mean, like, uh, working as a volunteer? Uh, 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 six volunteer? weeks. Uh -huh. Yeah. Six weeks. Okay. Yeah. And then you went to Philippines, or you? At that, yeah. At that time, I was I was like uh, taking uh, one month per year just to go and travel uh, on my own. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I mean, in, it was in 2015. I was uh, traveling. I'm through the Philippines. I took one month to travel in the Philippines, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm asking you partly because I went with uh, my best friend to Cambodia. Uh, oh. 
uh, yeah. When was that? Yeah, well, more or less, you know, I am not good at dates, but uh, it was, I'm, I, I guess, 2014, maybe, something. Okay. And we went from, you know, um, the north, south to the north, you know, we traveled uh, a lot on bus, you know, with, uh, with uh, people there. Right. And, uh, and, uh, and really, I mean, I wanted to explore more, but then something else happened and uh, popped up, but uh, the, the, another destination was Philippines. I mean, we're, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, but but Philippines and Cambodia are really different. Yeah, and I remember yeah. from what yeah, I, I rem from what, re what I recall in Cambodia. Actually, that was the f in Cambodia. I have two really two two um, two memories there. I mean, the first one is like I was invited to the funerals of uh, of a person there because I was working for an association there, uh -huh. and I was invited to funerals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was really, I mean, I was like feeling sad, but nobody was sad. I mean, it was like a kind of celebration there. And there was like, oh, wow, okay. I mean, like that changed a bit, you yeah. know, how, how I felt and about uh, that. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, the second moment is is um, when I met this, um, I, I was I was like in sim, sim rep, and I was taking these pills, anti uh, paludic, we say, mm -hmm. um, pills, and uh, yeah. I was a bit depressed at the end of the of the trip, and I met this this barman, we, we became friends, and you know, I mean, uh, he 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 is gay, I mean, because he's still alive. And first question I asked him, I asked him, but is it okay to be gay here? Because in my mind, I mean, when you live in a poor country, it's very hard to be gay. Because I mean, I, I, I was raised in Morocco and it's very hard to be gay there. So then I, he said, of course, yes, I mean, I mean, you can do whatever you want. And then you, you like, I mean, it was like a slap in my face, just like, okay, you have like wrong beliefs or mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know how to say them. I mean, like, you know, I believe that I don't know where they come from. I mean, yeah. introjects, let's say, yeah. in yeah. case yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I, I like this about, about traveling as well and meeting people. It's just like they, uh, they break some, 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 some beliefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I, this is the funny thing. I always say to, to, to my friends, I mean, don't break people to put them in your beliefs, break your beliefs uh, mm -hmm. so you can welcome people. Mm -hmm. And this is what I like about it. Uh, about traveling and uh, to this yeah. uh, well region, actually, in Asia, it is, uh, yeah, kind of, whoa, uh, revelation. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I agree, I agree. And, uh, okay, since you started with those introjections, the, the, the question <laughs> would be, how did you, yeah, come to Gestalt with all that you've already mentioned? <laughs> this Gestalt yeah. World. Um, actually, I came to Gesta through <laughs> analysis. <laughs> I started with that because I, I was in pain. I mean, I, I was, I like, I have an, um, and let's call it very quickly. So it's like not uh, completely true, but not completely wrong. Uh, like identity crisis. Mm -hmm. um, identity crisis, like my male crisis. I mean, because I was feeling like, uh, hypersensitive but i was raised in like uh, a culture where i had to be like strong mm -hmm. i mean uh, men don't cry mm -hmm. and uh, so this identity and the other one is like who i am i am moroccan i'm french mm -hmm. i mean arabic uh, european whatever and then also my relations my relationships to women mm -hmm. to um, i mean i i was like feeling like uh, I have no control over my uh, my um, my sentimental life and I mean I was like messing with everything all the time mm -hmm. and also like my uh, <laughs> drug abuse at that time I mean uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I had to manage all this mm -hmm. so I went to uh, to do psychoanalysis mm -hmm. and for a year 
and then I mean it helped me a lot and then uh, I started like um, humanist therapy for three years mm -hmm. and then I went through some like uh, I don't know uh, I did some hypnosis because mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, to quit smoking mm -hmm. and some other stuff. And then I met Gestalt in 2013 but with massage. I mean, it was uh, like uh, a friend who told me, um, I mean, like it was a woman we were dating and she, she was, I mean, it was really a, a very important uh, relationship for me. And she just told me about the, uh, Massage Gestat, and I went there and I discovered this. It was really like, wow, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then uh, I went through um, through Gestat therapy, and I'm still on Gestat therapy actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and that was like I experienced. I think for the first time in my life, I experienced real trust, mm -hmm. and and like being welcomed and being. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I experienced someone who is um, holding a space for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have like emotion when I say this that way, but this is the, the real experience. And this was the changing experience for me. Someone who is holding a space for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, given the very fact that since, uh, you're, well, 17 year old, I mean, for those years, you were like an independent, yeah, and then, wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, the funny f thing with this massage is uh, that we don't know it in Poland as Gestalt massage. And when I interviewed um, some other person from um, France, uh, she also told me about this massage. And I, uh, and I said, what? Uh, and you also uh, are saying that this through this, Gestalt massage or massage gestalt, whatever. It's wow. the name is sensitive gestalt massage. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's really it's really interesting because I mean, for for example, the session it lasts like let's say around an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. You have some time. I mean, you follow the cycle, the contact cycle. You have like mm -hmm. pre-contact. You discuss with the with the person. What are you here for? How do you feel? Mm -hmm. And then you can be like, um, you can be as you are, you can keep your underwear, be naked, whatever. But there is like a session, there is a lot of communication while touching the body and how you feel and how the person reacts. And through the massage, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, it's not like the massage is not given to you. There is something like uh, uh -huh. you are doing the massage with the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, co-creation mm -hmm. and you're co-creating the massage and you do with what happens with the, um, with like what, uh, what pops out during the, 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 the massage. And then when uh, at the end you have something uh, like, um, I don't know if you say, say it, uh, enveloping. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like a baby. I mean, you have like a towel. Oh. Right, yeah. Yes, that's, that's exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh -huh. not, not hugging, but just but like... Rope, uh, rope, like rope. roping. yes, roping. exactly. Yes, like, exactly. yeah. Uh -huh. And then you have this post contacts when you just like share on how, how you felt, how you, you went through the massage. And it's, for me, it was really important to reconnect with the body because the body was something like uh, I... I, I didn't, I did I met my body with this Gestalt massage, mm -hmm. honestly, because I, I loved massages, but every time I was having a massage, I was thinking about the conditions mm -hmm. of uh, the, the therapist who was uh, giving me the massage, if he was well paid, if he liked or she liked her job, uh, etc, etc. I was in the mind, not really enjoying the massage. And then going, doing this uh, Gestalt massage, it was like the first, one of the first time when I really enjoyed it fully. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, do you continue? Or mean, I mean, do you have regular s sessions like this, or is it like occasionally in, in these days? I wonder. If, no, or is it I like mean, a therapy? Uh, this massage can uh, work as a therapy, in fact, when that, when done regularly. I used to have it regularly. Now I'm having massage on a regular basis as well, but not just that one. I, I don't know if it can be a therapy, but 
I don't know, honestly. I think that it can help, of mm -hmm. course, but it depends on how we define therapy, finally. Okay. Yeah, Again, but, but I mean, if it's something that heals, yes, yeah, it can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, and you said, and you started your training as a therapist also, uh, somewhere on the way, uh, because you mm. said no. Yeah, no, I mean, it was, I, I started with the, the, um, uh, um, my, my Gestalt therapy in 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, then three years later, when I came back from Poland, actually, I was just like, okay, I want to do that. Because I, what I liked a lot about the Gestalt is the fact that you can you see the situation you cannot like uh, separate the the, or, the organism from the environment mm -hmm. and that was really like oh i mean like something yeah that that's it you know it's just like if you live in a world when you don't know you feel that something is not okay with the how it's working and then you have just like uh, someone who puts in words what you feel mm -hmm. And that was really the, the thing, you, you know, these things of like, uh, we co-creating something, um, we are both responsible of what's happening. Uh, we, everything is welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to learn more about it. That that's where I started the training. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is that I was feeling something like I was having like, uh, one session per week, one hour per week with my therapist and where we were talking about how we feel, <laughs> how, uh, how, uh, what's happening, uh, etc. But like uh, on, the, on the other hand, I had like 24 hours a day, seven days a week where I was with people that, I mean, and we were not talking about that. It was weird to say, yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like this when you say that. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, feeling like, like I have two parallel words going on <laughs> and I felt really alone mm -hmm. and the, the first thing when you st start here in France I, I did like this um, uh, EPG mm -hmm. EPG I mean it's uh, you have like the first year is like group therapy mm -hmm. every month a weekend per month so I started with this and that was amazing mm -hmm. that was amazing that was like a wow <laughs> Okay, I'm not alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and yeah. now you are currently at, uh, at the training and you also work as a therapist. How does it look like in your everyday? I, mm -hmm. I, I finished my training like uh, last year. So I'm start, I have, um, I have uh, started like this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm, I'm also doing a coaching. So I have some clients in coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, in therapy and I'm doing also I was doing consultancy for uh, for like as a as a project manager so but now I mean with the, this coronavirus my last contract uh, stopped mm -hmm. so yeah now I'm I'm just trying to see how I'm gonna manage for the rest of the year because it's at the same time, it was a great opportunity for me because I'm just like, I, I, didn't, I don't know if I told you I'm creating. This is also why I, why I contacted you because I'm, uh, I'm working on a podcast and the name is uh, like No Border or Borderless Therapy. In French, it's Therapie Sans Frontières, uh -huh. where I interview some therapists. I mean, it's not only Gestalt, it's different, uh, uh -huh. but it's in French. So I started doing this. I, I like it. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, mm. so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you haven't mentioned, I mean, this uh, podcast, but uh, yeah, but if you could, I mean, uh, yes, send me, uh, uh, yeah. For sure. Uh, it's in French. It, that's okay. I mean, I, you know, oh. I'm embarrassed, you know, uh, speaking now French after many years, but I was, I, I was taught, I mean, I learned this language in, in Paris for. Uh, oh every summer for three or four years consecutively so you know okay so the small signals and so on okay. i am aware also that there is there are such things which i'm not that much aware in english actually but well english is uh, you know because my friends uh, in gestalt are yeah this is like a common language but, mm. but i like french so 
Nie. To mówisz francuski. <laughs> mówię, mówię. <laughs> je ne peux pas dire un peu. Je, 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 oui, je ne je, je, je pas français, mais... Mais, oui, mais euh, j'ai peur euh, que je vais je veux utiliser, je vais employer trop euh, anglais ou, ou trop... Euh, je ne vais pas... Comme tu vois. Ok. Ce <rire> n'est pas, pas facile. Euh, euh, je, 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 je sens, euh, comment dire, euh, je sens cette langue, mais ça fait longtemps euh, que j'ai... la pratique. You need to practice. You need to practice a language. I mean, this is for sure. Uh, yeah, but I love, I love, uh, you know, this um, music. Uh, you know. Yeah. And I want to, you know, uh, to somehow um, flow with it. And and yet I uh, uh, well, I like the words. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but if you continue to have uh, some conversations, uh, other and uh, maybe uh, concerning the, uh, our projects, your and mine, we can. I would be, sure. yeah, I would love to speak uh, the tongue on tongue. Sure, and we can do like uh, language exchange. We'll speak French and uh, then you'll help me speak Polish. Right, right. Because, well, in, in fact, your Polish is not like uh, Dzień Dobry only or Dziękuję. Nie, nie, nie. Mówiłem mi troszkę po polsku. Świetnie. Dziękuję bardzo. Wow, wow, okay, great. Oh. No, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking very little. I mean, it's not, it's not uh, Jin Dobre, but it's. Uh, well, I mean, but your, I mean, your pronunciation and you know, uh, no, that's okay. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much. This is the Arabic. Uh, this is. I had this conversation with my Polish teacher when uh, back when uh, in Poland and. And uh, I, I told him I am very lucky because my two mother tongues are French and Arabic. And I think that with two languages, we, you have all the re uh, sound ranges ever. I mean, I think you have, you have the, you have the, you have the, you have the, you have, the, you have all the, the sounds. So it's very easy to just like uh, listen, understand, and then speak. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I never heard. Uh, yeah. About, yeah. I mean that kind of observations. Wow. Well, yeah. But uh, now when you said that, yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> and uh, and tell me. Uh, so um, okay. Uh, you, you want to somehow? Oh yeah. Because uh, too many many questions now. But you somehow quitted your um, this field of engineering. I mean. And uh, I, you don't want to come back there in uh, in this position of an engineer, more like a consultant, or I don't know. Actually, what happened? It was in 2012. I stopped uh, being engineer, and I uh, I had like a coaching uh, training, okay. and I started coaching, but I I couldn't make a living uh, mm -hmm. of it. It was very hard, so I just started uh, a company in uh, consultancy uh -huh. and uh, so I did it as a freelancer and now I'm still doing it for me I mean I can do I like the fact I like doing a lot of things actually mm -hmm. it's somehow a way for me not to get bored and mm -hmm. not to repeat the same thing so um, yeah I mean I like doing both and from time to time for example I mean this this the, the I mean, consultancy also allows me to like travel. For example, uh, it allows me to go to Poland. I spent like six months in Poland without working. Mm. Sorry. And, uh, and I took like, for example, one year, two years ago, just like doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I needed like a break, you know, just like uh, to, to be, <laughs> to face emptiness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is something okay. I'm lucky that I can do this when I, so yeah. Yeah. So for, for me, it's something I can do and still do. I don't quit something. I just like yeah. do things aside. Mm -hmm. And do you think you could, you know, uh, or maybe you already are trying to, or tried to, um, uh, somehow uh, bringing those gestalt um, roles, gestalt uh, sensitivity to the com corporations, to the... <laughs> uh, it's a very funny question. Uh -huh. 
I mean, no, it's an interesting question, but it's very funny because mm-hmm. um, I try to do that mm-hmm. uh, through coaching, like with the Gestalt orientation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. I think that the universe don't want me to go there and I don't want to go there. I think that there is a lot of violence in uh, companies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that the purpose of company is to make, money for people for investors mm. so i mean you can do whatever for me you can do whatever you want you will not change the purpose of the company mm. you can make it better you can make it like smoother you can but i mean the yeah. purpose we it's that i i'm not saying that it's good or bad i'm just saying that I mean, I feel like there are a lot of coaches that try to bring something in companies, but I mean, I, I cannot do that. I, I, I have, it's very hard for me to do that because it's like, I can't forget that the first um, purpose of a company is this. Mm-hmm. And what I'm trying, and the universe also is, is bringing me opportunities more in schools, for example. Uh-huh. Educational. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for example, um, for example, have doing workshops mm-hmm. in uh, schools in new uh, innovative programs. I did one in uh, in Morocco. Mm-hmm. It, it was an innovative program, like of one year, when they took uh, people from like eighteen to thirty five, from um, high school degree to to like a doctorate, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and they have like. Uh, common um, classes of uh, history, art, uh, mm. theater uh, and stuff. And the other, at the other side, they have like projects and the educational context is uh, built depending on their needs to achieve their goal and uh, performing the project. Mm-hmm. So that was really nice to meet all those people, I mean, from different wow. like regions. And I, I love that. So. I don't know why. I mean, I know that a lot of there is a lot of money in companies, especially with coaching. Uh, but uh, mm. I think that there is something not connected with the way who, with who I am and uh, and this field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's some kind of inconsistency. I mean, like their goal uh, contradicts uh, in some ways Gestalt values. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is it is a topic for me as well. Not maybe in my professional life, uh, but uh, I wonder about it uh, often when there are those you know people work in organizations and uh, they they try. So I maybe maybe it is possible. Maybe not in every country. Maybe uh, corporate world. I don't know. In Poland, corporate world is, you know, very violent. I don't know if in France, but maybe in some other countries, it's not, it's, it's getting not that violent. I mean, uh, you know, it's like feudal, like, you know, it's violent. Yes. <laughs> violent. This is, yeah. Hmm. This is very interesting because I worked in Poland and, um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it was very strange because at the same time, I, uh, I mean, uh, I, it was nice, but at the other time, there was a mix between violence and smoothness. I mean, it's like a violence that doesn't say its name. Mm-hmm. It was something which is like, worse uh, like, than, than violence itself, no? Which, which is even worse. Yeah. This guy, this yeah. disguised. Yeah. Yeah. But but still, I mean, I didn't feel like it's worse than in ah. France. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's different. Mm-hmm. And and for I had this conversation with uh, with with uh, with coaches. I mean, Gestalt coaches in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, companies, and their point of view is that I mean, you cannot change. This is something you cannot change. I mean, there are companies. This violence exists. Uh, we know that yeah they do this, but I mean, what what are we going to do in the meantime? Just leave it that way, or try even mm-hmm. if it's inconsistent, mm-hmm. even if we know that this is the last. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the the purpose, it's to make money, but we can make it smoother. Mm-hmm. So I mean, mm-hmm. and actually, I understand both positions. My position yes. is yes. more like I don't feel comfortable doing this. 
but I understand people who do that. I like, it. I like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it, it seems that you made a lot of work uh, with it. I mean, it's, uh, wow, it's, not, it's uh, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I like it. I learn from it. This is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Learning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. so that was, uh, yeah, I wonder what, uh, and, uh, well, I, I, I don't know if, uh, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, because you are now thinking about your, um, uh, what, uh, after, uh, you know, this virus and maybe um, this risk of, uh, of coming back of this virus and you are thinking about your, uh, your future, so you somehow want to relate your future with Gestalt therapy and uh, so on. You would like to have, you know, more clients or more projects like the one you mentioned in Morocco, because it sounded really interesting. <laughs> uh, my, my, my experience um, in life has taught me, I think, one thing that, I mean, the way I think now about the future is incomplete because I'm missing things that will happen and that I'm not aware of. I don't know if it's clear. Mm -hmm. Very much. Okay, so uh, the thing now is um, I'm, I'm just starting doing this, this podcast, for example. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm just like uh, doing some uh, prospection, uh, looking for some business. Mm -hmm. I um, f f also working for a collaboration with schools. I'm starting to uh, to give uh, like classes in September in uh, a digital school in um, in Paris. Um, I would like to have more clients, yes, in Gestat, but this is. Okay, actually, I, my, the first question is for me is I, I'd like to have more clients uh, in that's Turkey. True. That's, that's, uh, that's for sure. But I don't want to make all my living out of it. Mm -hmm. This is also something uh, that is sure for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, to have more clients in Gestat, I, I mean, I, either I do a lot of, um, mm -hmm. let's say, self-branding. <laughs> And I don't feel comfortable because for me, I mean, as a therapist, I mean, I mean, a client comes to me. I don't go to look for a client. I mean, this is something weird. So I'm just talking uh, with my friends or people I like, uh, like my trainers that I like about uh, the fact that I started doing it. And I'm trying to um, invest my time in stuff that I like. For example, this, this podcast, this, this podcast. And also uh, there is something that I... I'm really, um, I feel bad about is the cost of therapy. I feel like therapy is something that is elitist. I mean, that, I mean, either you're rich and you can afford therapy or you're not and then you can't. This is uh, from one side. And the other side is that all the therapists I'm talking to uh, including me, I mean, they do like um, low prices for some situations, some people that mm -hmm. are in need. So therapists are like taking all or carrying all the weight of um, solidarity, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about a way of making, and it's, and the third fact is that for me, it's important to invest money in therapy. Mm -hmm. It's not something that should be like for free because I mean, it won't work. Mm -hmm. And there is something like uh, the client will feel in debt mm -hmm. or uh, something like this. So I'm trying to think of a way of like making therapy accessible mm -hmm. to people. Uh, and this podcast is part of it because a lot of people doesn't know what is therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have like in mind like a, a, a sofa and a, a guy yeah. like with weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, say, mm -hmm, tell me about your mom. And yeah. your dad. Insaneness, yeah. Yeah, and and so this post podcast, and I think that also this, what you're doing, this is what I like also of uh, this human of Gestalt, because I heard about, I mean, I, I liked what they did about humans of New York, humans of Paris. Mm -hmm. I think you, you get inspiration from, yes. from that. It's really nice, mm -hmm. because it makes it maybe more like human. I mean, like, uh, it's 
it's not something that is that happens like in a dark room with we don't know what happened inside i think that it's very nice to to shed some light on what's happening in our offices mm -hmm. and it's i like that and this is what also what i'm trying to do with this podcast is mm -hmm. like like interview therapists and like personally who are you because with honestly i don't care i like guess that but i don't care about um, about the the current or the methodology i mean what he is is the what's happening between uh, in the situation let's say to stay in Gestalt. <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah this is something i'm i think i'm spending a lot of time on now mm -hmm. because this is uh, something that uh, that is not fair for me i mean i i feel that it's not fair and i'm trying to find a solution to that and at the same time i realized that by doing this I am getting more into light, the light of the world, you know, and I like this light, you know, doing things that I believe in mm -hmm. uh, instead of just like doing self branding. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is what I'm working on. I don't know what the future will be, yeah, but, but for is, now I'm still confident. <laughs> yes, this is okay what you are saying. I mean, in terms also on, of my uh, question, I guess, and I. Yeah, and I like it because I like it that you actually uh, uh, are here and uh, reached out for us. I mean, and uh, in fact, this is uh, what lies behind this project as well. On the one hand, interview established and ex very much experienced therapist. Yeah. And this is important for people uh, all over the world, uh, you know, to connect with them this way. And I'm having fun and taking pleasure in having that opportunity. And at the same time, to, to you know, interview people who are new to the Gestalt world, who have their own ideas. And, uh, you know, because the future is uh, in our hands. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I like, you know, the, your ideas and uh, really in different places, but we had the same ideas, motivations. Exactly. That, that that was my first motivation when I contacted you because a friend told me about what you were doing and I was just like, okay, humans of Gestalt, like humans of Paris, humans of New York. And I was, wow, they did it. And then I saw that you had Jean-Marie Robin, you had so many like very known names. And I was, wow, I want to be part of it. Honestly, yeah. this is, and, and I want to, I mean, I, I really like this energy mm -hmm. of, of this and uh, and really i mean congrats for what you're doing because i really like uh, like it i know that it's a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> i know and yeah it's really nice and i like those kinds of um initiatives here and here and there and see how we can like build like tomorrow actually mm -hmm. it's this is like what we're talking about yes, yes. yeah Okay, so uh, th thank you very much uh, for this thank interview. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for and here. Can sure. Okay. Okay. So I I will stop. Um...